Um, from hearing clients, I've seen that performance of quant strategies has been mixed uh, year to date. Some of the multi-managers who maybe focus on more non-linear quant strategies or alpha have had reasonably good performance. Uh, some of the risk premia strategies have, had, have experienced reasonably good performance, reasonably strong performance. Uh, however, some of the more traditional ML factor strategies, which are risk controlled, have had challenging performance. And I wanted to sort of start off the panel uh, to discuss uh, performance. Uh, and maybe I'll start off with, with Shafiq, uh, who, who leads systematic strategies uh, at CPP. And just to, just to start off by saying, what are you observing in terms of performance, uh, in terms of ML strategies, uh, or in terms of traditional risk premium strategies? What are, you, what are you seeing out there? Sure. Uh, thank you, Javed. Uh, so I lead the quantitative equity team at CPP Investments. We're part of the uh, systematic strategies group, and we manage a number of equity, long, short, and long only strategies. CPP Investments is the largest uh, pension fund manager in Canada. And so it's certainly been a really great year in terms of quant equity uh, performance. And uh, the traditional risk premia have done very well. We've seen strength coming in momentum. We've also seen uh, value doing well, which is sometimes unusual to see both value and momentum doing well, uh, quality. Uh, and it's been true across the globe. So. In Japan, for example, value has been very strong on the, on the back of some corporate governance reforms. Momentum has also been doing quite well. And I think part of the driving force for that is that the macro environment has been relatively benign and consistent. And so we've had strong growth, uh, pretty low unemployment, uh, inflation is generally coming down, and we have a lot of themes that have been driving investing. So. AI is certainly a big one. There's a lot of talk about the Magnificent Seven. And all of that makes for you know, an opportunity for these traditional risk premier to do well. Uh, and you know, that's what we've seen. For pure alpha strategies or machine learning strategies to sort of capture some of that, I think what needs to happen is uh, they should be able to focus on alternative data sets that can capture those macro themes, those macro trends. And so whether that's looking at labor markets or earnings growth or sales growth, uh, if they are able to do that, I think they can sort of catch that risk on behavior. Uh, and another uh, area would be if these machine learning strategies can uh, sort of identify the traditional risk premium that are going to do well in the macro environment and, and make those appropriate switches then that's another way for them to you know, achieve good performance, so, which is challenging. Yeah, so you think uh, the use of alternative data or maybe more um, targeted style timing as a result of the macro environment may enhance uh, traditional ML strategies? Correct, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Arik, what, what are you sort of seeing out there as well? Uh, some of our clients are complaining about uh, performance, especially due to sort of the short interest factor uh, rallying when you see a, uh, you know, a sudden uh, risk rally. So they're exposed to short interest, uh, negatively exposed to short interest. There is alpha there, but a lot of times they get stung when, uh, you know, when there's a risk rally and short interest rallies. What are you sort of seeing in terms of performance? I know you, uh, you've built some synthetic uh, hedge fund return type strategies, so I'd be interested to hear your views on uh, performance, uh, recent performance and how potentially ML strategies can uh, enhance performance? Um, I would say that the, the issue of, um, of um, crowding, and by crowding I mean um, commonality in the action of investors, meaning they trade for the same reason at the same time. Uh, this is um, uh, something that becomes more and more um, of a risk. Uh, and explain some of the gyration we've seen um, in recent years or over time as opposed to 20, 30, 40 years ago. Uh, and in part, um, this is um, uh, much more of a risk um, when it comes to systematic investing because systematic investing being driven by investment rules is much more um, prone to the, to the ability of investors using, broadly speaking, the same signals, and we just heard a few, momentum, value, and so on. 
Um, they may be slightly different in the way they're being specified, but broadly they're similar, and therefore they would, uh, they would result in investor trading similar security as, at the same time, going in and out. And that's what creates the, uh, the crowding effect, which tends to exacerbate market movement, which, which we've seen uh, over the last decade and, and, and prior to that. Uh, so that, that's one aspect. Short interest is one, one element of this and kind of one, can be used as one indicator. And at the same time, um, we've seen some, some changes in the use of so short interest and the whole notion of shorting uh, as an outcome of the uh, dynamics we've seen around, um, around uh, GameStop. So uh, I think the, the GameStop episode and, and some other stocks certainly highlighted the, uh, the risk of, um, of, um, of a short squeeze. Um, certainly highlighted the, the fact that uh, short squeezes can, can be um, a result of, um, of different type of action from different groups of investors that maybe weren't, uh, weren't seen as such uh, beforehand. So um, uh, on one hand, given that uh, there is increased uh, risk in shorting, that may deter some from doing it. And at the same time, those that have high conviction would be doing it. So in that sense, looking at, at short um, as conveying some information about the fundamental views of investors uh, is now stronger than before. Because those who actually do that have more conviction than before, given the increased risk that they see in those, those actions. So um, certainly it's something that we, uh, you know, we follow, we use, uh, by the way, not only in equity market, but also in, in credit market. Um, there's shorting activity there, and there is predictability in shorting equities that it pertain to the bonds issued by the same firm. So those views tend to, uh, to be informative beyond the securities they apply to, but more broadly to the capital structure of the firm. So certainly that's something that, uh, that we see, we use, and, and we see investors um, uh, employ in their investment process.